Hi, and welcome to question number two, part two of this, uh, what's the worksheet called? Quantitative acceleration problems. So in this case, uh, the tallest building in Winnipeg, it's not the Richardson building, is the 201 Portage Avenue. Uh, it's a building with in need of a better name. It's just the address here. Uh, a student drops a ball from a window and it falls 125 meters in five seconds. The first part says make a well-labeled diagram of the situation. Well, maybe I'll just go off to the right here and I'll make a diagram up here. Let's say that they drop the, the ball over here and it falls and I'll do a bit of a motion map here so it's uh, accelerating on the way down so it's kind of going like this and uh, each time we get a little bit of a velocity vector here that increases the whole time. These are the velocity vectors. Um, anything else we need to put in there? This is, I think, the first time here that we've had, instead of a horizontal position, uh, we've, we've got vertical here. So let's, let's talk about this here. So we're going to, instead of using x, we're going to use y. And we can decide here about which way we want to have positive and which way we have negative. Now I think pretty well all the time in the past we had uh, this was our origin and this was the positive direction. Pardon me, that was the positive direction, that was the negative direction, and we would use x. So now we're doing vertical stuff, and this is the way the object's falling. Now we can pick, we can make up positive and down negative, or we can make down positive and up negative, and we can change every single question what we want to do. So in this question, the ball is falling downwards. So if we were to make, if we're going to go with sort of like the regular way and say that, that up is positive and down is negative, then we would have negative velocity the whole time. Uh, and you know what, it's a little inconvenient because there's already a VT graph made for us and it looks like you know it's set up for positive velocity. So let's switch this around and let's say that down is positive and up is negative. So we could kind of go like this. Uh, for we could put that onto our motion map as well. We could say, okay, here would be the origin, and then this way is positive, so that these are the velocity is getting increasingly positive. Okay, so now it says, oh, I'm trying to erase here. Come on, there we go. Now it says. Um, make a well-labeled graphical representation of the situation. Okay, so this will start with a zero velocity and it's increasing in the positive direction. I'll just kind of go like that and list the given quantities and quantities to find. Well, it'll help us when we do this here. It says they drop the ball from a window and it falls 125 meters. Well, what would we do with that? Normally we'd say delta x equals 125, but you know what? Let's say that delta y in this case is equal to 125 meters. Is that in the positive direction or in the negative direction? Well, downward, which is the positive direction, so I can just leave that. Um, the initial velocity, because it says it drops the ball, the student drops the ball, not, not throws it down, so that means that the initial velocity is zero. Uh, the the final velocity, I don't know what it is. Um, anything else that we know here? Oh, it takes five seconds. So how much time goes by? It goes five seconds. The other, remember there's five things. The other one that we don't know is uh, acceleration. Uh, okay, so let's label as much as we can on here. So we know this is going to be five seconds. Um, the initial velocity is zero. There's not too much else with, that we know here. Um, Determine, it says the acceleration of the ball, and determine the distance it travels in the third second. Well, okay, so it starts from zero. Where does the 125 fit on this chart? Like we got the zero, we got the five seconds in there. That is the area, okay? So just a reminder again is that uh, displacement is equal to the area under the VT graph. The only difference we're going to say this time is we're going to say that that displacement is delta y. Delta y is equal to, it looks like a triangle to me, so it's one half times the base times the height. So we're going to say 125 is going to be one half. What's the base? It looks to me like five seconds. And the height is, we don't know. This height here, 
Well, that is actually the same thing as our final velocity. Okay, so hmm, mathematically, I think what I'm going to do first is multiply both sides by 2 so that uh, I get 250 equals. Now this 1 half, here I'll just say, a, I'll add it like this, I'll say times 2 here, times 2 here. So what happens is this half and this times 2 are going to turn into 1. So they kind of cancel each other out. So I get 1 times 5 times VF. So I get 5 times VF. Uh, and now at this point, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So 50 is equal to the final velocity. So the final velocity is 50 meters per second. Cool. Now I can put that in over here. I got this 50. And I'm going to add it over here. So to show, hey, now I figured that out. All right, so that was hmm, CI, I guess, right? Well, that was one of our answers. And we also want to figure out the acceleration. Acceleration is still the slope on the VT graph. So acceleration is the rise, and which in this case is the change in velocity, divided by the run, which is the change in time. The velocity goes from 0 to 50, so that's 50 meters per second. The amount of time that goes by is 5. 50 divided by 5 is 10 meters per second squared. Uh, there we go. That's pretty cool. Oh, there's a, something else to, to do. I thought we were all done. It says here, determine the distance that it travels in the third second from time 2 to time equals 3. Well, let's try to show that in here. So this would be a 1, 2, 3, 4. So between t equals 2 and t equals 3. So let me get my very cool little highlighter thing going on here. So it's sort of this, this shaded area here. That's the shaded area that we want to figure out. OK, so I think probably the easiest way to do this is to divide this up into a triangle and a rectangle. Uh, maybe what I'll call this one is uh, area 1 and area 2. Okay, so where shall we do this work down over here? I'm going to say that, uh, oh, maybe I'll switch to blue so it stands out. I'll say uh, the, the displacement delta y uh, from t equals 2 seconds to t equals 3 seconds. Okay, so this is the part that I'm working on now. Uh, we'll say, well, displacement is equal to this, these two areas. All right, so it's uh, this area plus this area, and I'll just remind myself that this was called, I called this one uh, area number one plus area number two. Oh, uh, running out of room. So delta y is equal to that. So moving moving over here, I'm going to say delta y is equal to, well, what does that triangle look like? So that is a triangle, so it's going to be 1 half multiplied by the base. Now the base will be here 1 second long. And the height will be, hmm, this is going to take a little bit of work. Let's see, so this is 50, so 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, right? So this is 30 and this is 20. So the height here would be 10 meters per second. So that would be 1 half times 1 times 10. So that would be 5. The seconds cancel each other out and I get 5 meters. Plus the, the second one, which is the rectangle. So I'll say length times width. The length of that, uh, I'm not sure which I'm, I'm going to use this, the, the, the horizontal axis, the, the time here. I'm going to say that is still one second times the height, which is 20 meters per second. So again, the seconds cancel each other out. So I'm going to get 5 meters plus 20 meters, so I will get 25 meters. And there's my final answer. Okay, so you should be good to uh, do the practice questions on this. And uh, as always, I will see you in class.